I am Nevin Lieber. I work at Argonne National Laboratory in the US, in the Chicago area. Um, I work on basically the C++ Standards Committee on Sickle and on Cocos. I work on our new um, supercomputer, Aurora. And on the committee, I'm like vice chair of the Library Evolution Incubator. I'm the vice chair of the US delegation. I'm also the admin chair. And I'm also on the Kronos Sickle Committee. Basically, I just keep volunteering to do more work, so. Can you, can you put on new <laughs> So what is MDSPAN? It's a non-owning, multi-dimensional array view for C++23. And we, the reason we put it in is we consider it a vocabulary type, both across domains and in something you want used in interfaces, things like string view and span. You want these things. And that's what it looks like. It's, it's got four template parameters, a bunch of constructors, and a way to index. There's a few other members, but, but not much. Right, element type's obvious. It's, you know, it's an um, MD span of ints or MD span of doubles. Um, extents describes the dimensions. And it's got, it's got a type, and it's got like each dimension. And if, if it's um, standard dynamic extent, just somewhere here. Right, so the type that's used for the index, which is something that span itself is missing, and then each dimension. And if it's standard dynamic extent, then the dimension is determined at runtime. Otherwise, it is determined at compile time and will give you better optimizations. And then we have this class called dextents. And what that does is it says if you have dextents of like int comma three, that gives you, um, through some template stuff, um, extents of int comma dynamic, dynamic, dynamic. Um, we, we really tried to shorten the name, Quarantine and I, and we kind of failed in 20, because we knew this was coming, so. <laughs> Uh, you don't, you know, on the committee, you don't usually get what you want. You just kind of get what you can live with. So, <laughs> And then layout policy, which is, is it row major? Is it column major? Is it strided? And here's kind of what, it, so layout policy is a concrete type. And then inside, there's a, um, a templated mapping class templated on the extents. And then a way to access data, like if you want a fancy pointer kind of thing, if you want um, restrict, you know, you know, which would be non-standard currently, you know, atomic access, et cetera. And like the default accessor, like, you know, it returns a reference, just what you think from a normal array, right? P square bracket I, if you want, um, what's it, what do we call, oh yeah, offset, right, P plus I, right? For regular pointers, those are identical, but for your fancy pointer, they may not be. And you construct this thing with, a, you know, one way is a pointer and a list of extents. And you just index it with um, regular square brackets. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you say finally, but like, it's, it's weird because like, the HPC community is just kind of happy to get MD span at all, but I think ergonomically, the square brackets, you know, are a godsend. So, how do we get here? That's really the meat of this talk. <laughs> Eight-year mission. And you saw the size of that class, right? It's not terribly big, right? But <laughs> ah, 2014, I was, you know, much younger, more naive. <laughs> and so um, Lucas and Herb and Sutter um, brought a proposal for a array view. And like this array view would take a bounds box, right? And it would take an index to point into that box, like, you know, so two more types. And then there's a strider array view if you wanted to do something that wasn't just like, you know, contiguous space. And back then, right, it's like, yeah, we'd like that variadic operator square bracket, but nobody wanted to wait for language support. And we basically wanted to make static and dynamic extents. So we had a vote in Issaquah, 
and the way votes work on the committee is that they're called straw polls. They're technically unofficial except for plenary votes. And we go five ways. Like the first is strongly in favor, then weakly in favor, then neutral, um, weakly against, strongly against. So if you see five sets of numbers, that's what we have, right? So, okay, do we want this kind of you know square bracket with something in parentheses syntax? Yeah, sure. Would we want this function call syntax? Because we know that one's variadic. Uh, it didn't seem quite as enthusiastic for that one. How about do it both ways, right? No, nah, nobody like that. Should we delay the paper until um, there's a fixed array view for just all static extents? No, nah, we don't want to delay the paper. Should we have iterators? Nah, <laughs> we can wait. What about layout? You know, run layout, lo right, layout left kind of thing. Yeah, we kind of want that. Do we want to wait for that? No. So should we put a array view in the arrays to yes? That, that's a resounding yes. Thank you, I'm done. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> There's a lot of optimism on our committee, not, not just in not just like, I, I give my title a snarky optimist, but like, we, we keep thinking we can get things in much quicker than we can. So we had an arrays to yes. And the reason is, um, there was a proposal to do like stack arrays. But there was no balance checking, it could over the stack, so um, a lot of people insisted that we have a safe way to access this. Right, so here's a bunch of like different kinds of things, and you heard Bjarne mention this one at his keynote. That's, the, by the way, these are because these names keep changing, and, and this one, uh, yeah, this one's about to change again. <laughs> I'll be a bigger slide. Because, so this model's exactly n elements, but determine at runtime. And if you notice, right, the template parameter, there's no allocator here. Right, it's not because it don't, it, you allocate it when you construct it, and then it lives forever. And so, what happened was, the people on the committee, especially um, compiler vendors, got like stuck. They go like, so what is, you know, how does this work if it's embedded in another type? And if that type, you know, the whole aggregate type's on the heap, how do you put this place? Part of your data on the stack and part on the heap? How does that all work? They didn't know how to solve it. So what does the committee do? Hey, let's put it in the document and we'll figure it out later. So the array ATS was kind of boring. And the ISICLA meeting comes and it's like, okay, what other array things do we have that we can put in this technical specification? So array view was the obvious choice. Um, there was array ref, which is kind of what span is, and then string ref, which didn't change to string view, as um, proposed by Jeffrey Askin at Google. One thing people were adding is like, do we do standard array with multi-dimension support? Do we add more template parameters? That's an ABI break, but back in those days, most of us weren't really thinking about that. And, and then things we got, like, you know, can you do make array? We kind of got that. And can extend share pointers to handle arrays? Yeah, it didn't go on that long. <laughs> in Jacksonville in 2016, we you know, voted to kill it. So it, it lasted three, three years. We did. We did learn a lot. So back to 2014. Hey, let's do another vote, right? right? Got some wording in wrappers row, got some minor changes. Should we send it to the library fundamentals TS version two? I mean, you know, oh, we're also on um, consensus. So it's usually like two to one of kind of these three added together versus those three. Yeah, that, that's consensus. So some minor fixes happened. Should we put it on the formal motions page? Which means the whole committee will now vote on it, whether or not it goes in. And kind of after the meeting, like um, at Urbana, right, there were a bunch of like, well, we should, you know, add the periodic op, you know, the function call operator so we can do lookup that way. We still want to fix the array view. Took some polls. Um, allow, you know, okay, so now we can have kind of both syntaxes for the one dimensional case. And about that time, um, Carter Edwards, who was at Sandia working on Cocos, um, he doesn't like it. 
and like so he writes a writes a paper saying like you know it's got a significant impact on performance including Cindy layout performance um, you know tiling and padding should ma you know should be a way to do it we need Strider as a layout option so this is all based on things done in Cocos in production you know you should have be able to mix compile time and runtime dimensions um, you could theoretically replace index and bounds because they're really just arrays, so sure. And it doesn't really say how it interacts with memory management. So the recommendation was to not put this into the arrays TS. Year one, yay! <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> so we had a library only um, meeting. Half that meeting was. Um, the start of the ASIO networking proposal. We didn't even have a paper. We had a SHA from Git that we were reviewing. Like half the group broke up to review that, and I was in the other half. I like to say we reviewed far more than networking people did, but tons of papers. <laughs> and remember, hey, we, you know, we finished up. Like, Look in good shape to move in Linexa. <laughs> and we're, 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 again, we're optimistic. I don't. <laughs> So um, revision six, the changes we proposed in clone were put in. And then um, there was a plenary discussion. And some of the Issaquah feedback was never incorporated. And the, there were some issues that were raised in the Apple's world that weren't addressed by Carter, the ones that Carter pointed out. And so LAWG um, supported the direction that Carter was, Carter Edwards was saying. So we actually, we took a vote, so in plenary, um, it's kind of like yes, no abstain votes. That is not consensus to get into this, to get into a standard or a technical specification or any official documents that we publish from this committee. So it was withdrawn. So we get a brief side view because I work on both Sickle and Cocos, and one question people ask me, what's the difference? Right, they're both performance portability. Um, so we're in high performance computing on supercomputers. And we need a way that users don't have to rewrite their code every time there's a new supercomputer. Because usually the contract goes to a different company, so it's a different architecture. And we need to be able to you know, port code fairly simply. So Sickle is um, vendor supported tool chain. Right? We, don't wanna, we at the labs don't want to get into the business of being a compiler vendor, especially across multiple architectures. So language extensions are allowed in this. And there's kind of implicit data movement versus explicit. But it's got its, right, Sickle you know, comes from OpenCL, which is graphics. So it's kind of got three dimensional roots and a fixed layout, um, row major. I'm currently working on trying to expand that. And a bunch of people, not just me. And so Cocos is just a library. We leverage whatever vendor tool chains, and we have backends for CUDA, HIP, Sickle, and a bunch. We support update dimensions. We could do more. There's, I mean, it was, when the code was written, people weren't using variadics, but we could easily put that in. Just there's not been any demand. And optimizing even more dimensions just becomes really hard. If we have to hand optimize, it's really hard. So here's what Coco's view, the interface looks like. And I'll get into how it's implemented, because it's not like this. Right, data type, that's you know, the same as element type. And there are like this both, I mean, you can mix runtime and compile time dimensions. And there's kind of this weird terse syntax for it. So like if you go like double star star, that's a, like star means, you know, like a regular expression matches anything, right? So this is a double with two runtime dimensions. But remember, whatever in here has to be valid C++. Right, so, right, you can do constant star 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 phi three, but you can't move these in, in, interspersed with stars. And, and Cocos to this day uses this terse um, syntax. And if you make it um, of const, then it's you know, read-only data. And we index, because we need the variadic one, we index with um, a function call operator. If it's one-dimensional, you can, of course, index with square brackets. And it's sometimes owning, right? Sometimes it manages the data it has, sometimes it doesn't. If you're passing it, and it's reference counted, but if we're passing it to a, from a CPU to a GPU, we can't do that reference count because you can only mem copy. But in practice, it just does work. 
and we generally try to avoid undefined behavior whenever we can, but <laughs> it's. <laughs> so next is the layout type, which you, you know, layout left, layout right. There's memory spaces. You know, is it on the CPU, GPU? Is it private memory, et cetera, kind of thing? And then traits. And traits are kind of like what's going to become the accessor policy. And what if it's a managed space or unmanaged goes in there. Atomic, you could do, you could do like restrict in there. But it's, it's not implemented like this. It's implemented as um, a variadic list of properties that we walk the list. So back to Renexa. So um, Christian um, is project lead for Cocos. And so they kind of have like shared array and weak array. Weak array being like array view. It's kind of spreading out the owning and non-owning and kind of like shared pointer and weak pointer kind of. There's some, I believe, forced parallels to that kind of model in the paper. And being able to customize the size type is important for performance on GPUs. And as part of this, well, maybe we should be, you know, we're the committee, we can do language changes too. So maybe we should allow this to be, op you know, like square brackets with nothing in it, optional, in that, that terse template syntax. But that's, that's a language change, right? So that's harder to get through the committee. And do we want to allow square brackets? Uh, people are on the committee are starting to warm to that idea. And Neil McIntosh from Microsoft um, brings up a proposal for bound safe views, his version of array view. And this is the first place you know, quiz time, right? That standard byte shows up. And we eventually, you know, standardize it like this, and we say you can type pun from this type on the other, right? So you can do care, unsigned care, and standard byte. And however, the other thing this had is that when constructing an array view with invalid values, it would terminate, right? This is, this is my, their model for safety. And not undefined behavior, I mean, and the community, at least at that time, and doesn't quite like things that just terminate on you. This was a big proposal. Like, so there's kind of an index type that uh, represents the point. There's a bounds iterator, so you can iterate over. Yes? So I was wondering if you dealt with comments, like kind of in, in those days. <laughs> We, we almost always move to un, undefined behavior. Yeah, so the one time we didn't I th was, I think, no, no, the original no accept proposal from Dave Abrahams, it was, it was undefined behavior to throw through a no accept clause. Oh. And people made the argument, this is just before my time there, that for safety reasons, it should just terminate. Um, throwing exception out of a parallel auger, that's not good. <laughs> Yeah, I would give it up because <laughs> you, you have no idea what the state is. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, and that makes sense, right? Because there's nothing else you can possibly do to. And contracts, you know, are wrestling with this issue right now, right? That that's one of their big issues. <laughs> no, we don't have. Yeah, we. The, I'll go to the side the committee works better when we have some written policy that says here's what we should be doing like you may have heard of the Lakos rule which says if you have a wide contract no preconditions and it doesn't throw an exception it's marked no except in the standard library if it's a narrow contract in the standard, in the standard library the only no, no, in the standard. yeah we're talking about different things yes in the standard and if it's a narrow contract, vendors can add it, and you can argue to add it on your, on your operation to um, library evolution. Like, for instance, um, dereferencing a smart pointer are marked no except, because people have argued that performance-wise we need that. I didn't say the argument is correct. I just said people have argued for that. <laughs> but we do much better. But having that rule makes um, the meetings go much faster, because you just point to that. And you know, like it or hate it, it makes you get a lot more progress done by having that. So back to this. So yeah, he had a bounds iterator, and then like static bounds and strided bounds, and yeah, it's, it keeps going. Like, and something for dimensions, right? Because you need a way to represent that. And then kind of this like array view. If you want to change the size type, if you pass this in instead of the I think it's 
yes, you pass this in instead of the value type, it takes the size type out of there instead of defaulting the size t and uses that for your iterations. And then finally, you know, array view. And I remember my first thoughts of seeing this, like, because I was, I was sitting in there when, when uh, you know, presented this, and it's like, it's way too complicated. I don't understand this stuff. It's a lot of classes. I want the people who need it figure it out. I checked the date of the paper. It was th exactly three years to the day before I started at Argon. Uh, <laughs> if only I knew. <laughs> so then, paper for span finally shows up, right? Just kind of separate out the one-dimensional version and the multi-dimensional version. And I stopped paying attention. Because of the previous paper, I just stopped paying attention because that all just seemed way too complicated. So the, that in a lot of ways is my fault. So <laughs> if you think it's a good idea, <laughs> then, then you're welcome. If you think it's a bad idea, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I, because I led the charge. Uh, my friend Rob Douglas, who was between jobs, so he wasn't at that moment technically a member of the committee, um, goes to me and says, hey, Matt, you need to object to this. Because it requires casting all over the place. And I go, like, you're right. And so I object to it. <laughs> and I went up against some well-known C++ luminaries, like, for instance, the person who gave the keynote here. <laughs> you, know, you know, you guys are okay, but, you know, it's kind of, you know, is it, when you're arguing something on the committee, it's adversarial. Right? It's, it's, it's terrifying. <laughs> and this is all before I was in HPC, right? So, you know, I thought the differences were, performance differences were minor, which is what every committee member says, you know, if, you know, ah, I want a feature, so yeah, sure. Uh, it's in the noise, don't worry about it. If I don't want, if you don't want a feature, you go, I can't even afford one cycle. <laughs> you know, you can't do an, you know, a check against null and string view because, you know, that will cost you one cycle the few times it doesn't actually get optimized away. But for me, the reason, I mean, I have to object to this is that it breaks interoperability with the rest of the standard library because the rest of the standard library uses size t. And making people cast, right, casting is error prone, right? It's a many to one operation and people just get it wrong. Do you cast signed to unsigned or unsigned to signed? And you can find um, various reasons why I can't remember which of those is the worst, but I found like pl problems. I just want to say, you're convincing Josh more than Mr. Cycle. <laughs> 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 so then um, the, uh, our paper system actually changed. That's why we got such a low number for this. Um, it used to be every paper was published um, via ISO, every proposal. And that's kind of, their website's kind of ominous to like have them publish stuff. We have a new paper system that we just did. We can do revisions. And so the ninth proposal in that was, it, it will be on G-SPAN. <laughs> so I've got a bunch more people on board. Um, on all the way from finance, um, this, this kid named Bryce, you know, was at uh, Lawrence Berkeley Labs. You may have heard of him. And again, the essential issue with the ray view is that it, it didn't fulfill the zero overhead abstraction. And we need another library, you know, you want to do something, you know, as close to the hardware as you can, and we would need another library to do that. So this one had a more general layout, had padding. Uh, you do a constant expert, extents and strides, and extensibility for other properties. Because it's, it, it looks really close to the Cocos one, other than a lowercase v instead of an uppercase v. <laughs> but there's a problem with having properties, is that these are different types, and they represent exactly the same thing, right? They're equivalent types, but they're distinct. Which means if I want to have an interface that takes something, what do I do, right? I've really only got kind of three possibilities. Either I do them. Separate overloads for each possible one, and it, if it's, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> pay a small runtime conversion cost, <coughs> which sometimes gets optimized out, or you stay in template land, right? None of those are desirable. So 
you know, do we want, and we want zero length extents. Um, we generally go for those kinds of things. <coughs> Just mathematically, it, it works better. We don't want a special case things, even if they're not, they don't seem terribly useful. Oh, the implementation makes special case. Like standard array, you can have a standard array of something comma zero, which is a special case implementation, but it makes a lot of algorithms just work correctly. So do we want zero length extent? Sure. Do we want property list? Yeah, sounds good. Do we want bounds checking? Yes, we want bounds checking. We want safety. We start trying to name it. I hate naming discussions on the committee. <laughs> And what about errors? We, like, what should we do? Because contracts was starting to show up. Um, John Lincoln's had a whole macro proposal for contracts, and then we he got talked into a language proposal is better. And the reason we need, I'll give my one slide, sidebar on contracts, right? We can't only have one knob that says, here be dragons, don't go there. And that's undefined behavior. And everything else is defined behavior. This is my view. Like, you'll hear terms like soft undefined behavior and library undefined behavior. I do not agree with that viewpoint. Because you're defining, th if you're defining things by definition, you're defining it, it's got something. But contracts will give us more knobs. Hopefully in 26. Back to, <laughs> so view has now been changed to array ref in terms of names, and we have, Yet another huge debate on signed versus unsigned size type. And pre ulu um, So at that point, um, the library evolution group like, wanted a paper with just wording and then a paper with rationale. They wanted separate papers for that kind of stuff. So um, Kogosim just kind of split it up. Sure, we'll do that. And the array declaration syntax, which is um, the language feature got moved to its own paper, so that could go through evolution, the language evolution, and motivation examples moved to its own paper. And in R3, there's this thing that says, the undesirable extents mechanism is this. Just pass a template in with all, all the extents. Of course, that's the one we pick. And here's the first time it's renamed MD Span. Not finally yet, but <laughs> and extents are part of the proposal. And then it's like a span of like should be able to index using a span and not just like square bracket, you know, or a function call of one comma five comma. Yeah, it makes sense. You should be able to, and you should be able to index with you know a one dimensional MD span. Hey, we're gonna ship. Unanimous consent. <laughs> Ah, yes, Library Fundamentals TSV3. <sighs> it never got MD span. As for shipping, late last year, um, people said, we need to get this thing out the door. It's just kind of been sitting here for years. And so should we publish it? Nah. Should we never publish it? Because like, let's just get the thing. There's a bunch of things in there for Library Fundamentals version one, let alone version like, When are we gonna put these in the standard? When are we gonna have enough yeah, never, or someone should propose moving them, right? So, you know, don't publish, that, you know, evaluate it for just putting in the standard, either we put it in or we throw it away. So, and, and I, was with, I was with like, let's, let's just throw it away and evaluate each feature. Um, I got put on board because we got rid of the most egregious, we, we on the committee lie to ourselves a lot because we're optimists, but like, we, th this was the, the sentence in the TS that I objected to, to like, I'm voting against p publishing. You know, we keep saying we intend to release because then people argue, well, you intend to release and so we have to do another version. It's like, if we keep saying that one, then we're gonna keep publishing it. So that got pulled. It is working its way to being published. I'm the admin chair, so I do the paper system. So ISO sends me a note every Saturday saying, hey, because this is a middle number of, of the end documents ISO has published, they go, you haven't published this one yet. I don't know how to stop this. I'll just get emails forever. <laughs> ah, ISO. <laughs> they do provide some benefits, but yeah, there's, there's some frustration sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, in Jacksonville, I, like, we don't really need to um, index by spam because no one's actually doing that in practice. And uh, R5 was not reviewed. 
And then um, Daisy had a proposal like, to kind of generalize the whole property mechanism. And it, it, it got some support. I mean, and the, but like the ability to customize basic MD span. So now it's going to be kind of basic MD span and MD span will be the common version. Our six comms. And so there's kind of, here's the basic MD span, and then we, you, you'll have just our template alias for the MD span. And then we have some wording issues, R7. Um, and how do we refer to span? Span had not shit, and it's really hard to refer to something that's going to be in a future TS, which was at the time the plan for span. And there's some updates made to the paper based on um, implementing it. 2019, right? This is what, year five? We're getting there. My talk, I get to say this. <laughs> One week later, I go to Hawaii, and we're uh, working on weeding and wording. And there at that time, uh, Corrington had a proposal. We, we knew we wanted the variadic square brackets, so we had to deprecate comma inside there, right? Because otherwise, it's just a comma operator, so it indexes by the, la the last term, right? This is just, you know, X comma Y says evaluate X, throw it away, and return what I does, what Y does. So that got deprecated. Prague, our host, their host is. <laughs> C plus plus 20 is done. Span is hot, it's in there. MD span is not. Um, Saturday, right after the meeting, I accepted the position of um, vice chair for library evolution, because it's not that much more work. I've been doing this for years. What could happen, right? <laughs> yeah, pandemic. <laughs> so um, I'm now an author on this, and we just do all telecons, right? So C++23 is, is, is the all telecon release, except for the very end. All right, so, so, I like, so how do we copy objects, right, in C++, right? We call a copy constructor normally. But that requires running code. So if you need to transfer between a CPU and a GPU, where would that code run? Does it have access to memory on both sides? But they give you ways to mem copy. So we can copy with the object representation. We can copy the bits. And we in HPC use trivially copyable as a proxy for types we can just copy over. So it's important. And I didn't realize how important that was until I joined HPC. So proposals would come up and say, we want to make it trivially copyable. And I normally just say yes, but not terribly enthusiastically. It's like, yeah, you know, somebody's going to have some more use cases if, if you can. Sure, why not? But now I actually really care and try to educate committee members why it's important to us. And we decide, hey, instead of this library fundamentals, which isn't shipping, let's put it in the standard, in the international standard. Yep, that's pretty strong consensus. Uh, still kind of hopeful for the syntax, <laughs> the terse syntax. And about this time, um, our common Daisy, a few others, um, proposed the variadic um, square brackets. And it should be able to accept zero more arguments, because we, we like things that you know, start at zero. No special cases for zero, for zero length. And we, 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 we kind of like, Drop the ball on both its user definition would match that of operator of function call operator because there were changes to allow that to be sta a static number function. And like every person said we should do this, but nobody actually proposed it. So I proposed it not for 26. I was not going to do a national body comment, and I talked to a few people. Um, talked to Gasper. He said, "Yeah, we should do this for 23." I talked to Michael Long. "Yeah, we should do this." So we had three national body comments and. Very few features got in um, during National Body Con. This is felt more to be a bug fix release than you know an actual feature proposal. And then Corey said, "Hey, you know, never should come visit." Really, that's a real quote. <laughs> it's a fun committee sometimes <laughs> when you're not too stressed. <laughs> so R13, right? We're getting there. We had the DXS type alias, and we got rid of the old MD span, right? We're, we're, we are finally converging. We don't need it. 
And then we had deduction guides, which um, Mike Spurtis um, pushed forward to get into the language. And I'll just do my one slide. He can tell me why I'm, where I'm wrong. <laughs> but it's, it's so you can call things with a syntax without angle brackets and construct things. And it just map, it's just a mapping. And it's, a, it's really a different set of um, overloads than with, say, what your um, constructors are inside the class. Like if you know pair of these, this would just call the, the um, deduction guide constructor. And for us, like, like this, is a, this is, again, another godsend. Like this makes this usable. It's otherwise, there's a bunch of template parameters most people don't care very much about. And even if they're defaulted, like if you have to change them, it gets painful. But it's a trade-off. There are times you still need to know the exact template parameters, right? Claim number variables, you have to know them. If you're debugging it, you have to know what, what type is it actually mapping to. But overall, it's really powerful and really, really good feature of the language. So here are the explicit deduction guides we have for MD span. <coughs> so if you, if you write this, it's going to go through here and say, hey, this is the one I think that matches. You know, if you look at it, right, it's the MD span of a reference, uh, <coughs> L value reference to a pointer. So remove the reference. Is it a pointer? Yes, it is. Remove the pointer. So int. So we're going to pass that into MD span. So we get like, okay, we're going to map to MD span of int and extent of size t. So this is a zero dimension one. Okay, and then there are some default parameters. Let's throw those on. I'm, I'm, I'm playing compiler. Right, and then finally, that's, you know, the constructor that gets called. And just, they're really cool. Oh, we're in 14, hey, okay. Should we put this in the standard? That's this vote. P3 means because we're, we're a new feature. Unanimous, that's November of 2021. And then a bunch of wording reviews, because there's a lot of wording in this. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of wording reviews. <laughs> and it's getting close to when we have to ship. So we decided we need to pull, off, pull out um, sub MD span from the proposal. We, can, we know we can add it later. We, th we think we can add it later. We never know for sure. So we pull it out. And they had enough time to review it here either. And. Um, I think, was it Bryce? I can't remember who did this one. But let's add the size type into extents so we can finally pass it if, if people care. And because we, we did actually did care. But you know, this gets rid of that whole debate we had for span because you can do this. Um, when I gave this talk before, <coughs> first person asked me a question was Bjarna. And he asked that question, you know, can I have a span, can I have an MD span with int as the, he goes, yes, you can. He's very happy. So. <laughs> When proposed, we said we're going to initially constrain it to unsigned types, though. And we said, no, nah, don't bother. We said, cool, because that's even better. You know, so send it, send this, that makes it. And um, we kind of forgot that, like, size type in the standard stand. I didn't forget it. I realized it about an hour after that telecon. And it's like, I don't want to derail this proposal. I want this proposal to get in. And then so then I propose that we finally we fix this to make an index type. We can do both, except like size type, you know, size should return size type. So we have to do the make unsigned in there. And, you know, So we just keep voting, right? Like, you know, it's, it's, you know people didn't want it because it's a late change. Yeah. We remained, in, internally we had um, inside, um, I think it's accessor, we had pointer, kind of related to data handle type because it's, it's fancy pointer is not really a pointer. Right? It just kind of looks like one sometimes. Sure. <laughs> Again, I don't care about naming discussions for the most. Names are important, but the way we do them on the committee, for the most part, is very bad. We just kind of like, oh, we don't like that name. Let's come up with a list of names right now. Let's vote on it in two minutes, and this is the name we will have for the next, you know, 100 years, right? Th this is not, I do not like that process. I keep fighting it, but it's, it's a never-ending battle. 
and we want to separate risk. We're not going to risk MD span for anything at this point. <laughs> um, somebody knows empty was, was missing, so we have to do the add that as a separate paper too. Again, no, no risk to MD span, right? Any changes we make, we will go, are you making any like changes? Maybe we should keep it for C26 when you're sure what you want. <laughs> so, on July 25th of last year, right, apply the changes in R18 to the working paper, unanimous consent. And we celebrated. <laughs> okay, there I am. <laughs> but it's not that, that was Prague. That, that, was, that was our Prague celebration for 20. <laughs> no, here's our celebration. Real screenshot. I didn't, didn't just think that one. <laughs> but yeah, we made it. And you know, at, at the time, like in August, I worked on um, EL.LS equals plus draft. It's there. Um, Cocos, we have a reference implementation that people are using. Um, NVIDIA, I haven't looked recently, but we're taking it, taking our reference implementation, putting it in. And so we got it in. Eight years. So what are we doing in the future? So I'm also on the sickle committee. And we're trying to figure out how do we, we want to use things that are in the standard in sickle. So how do we use this? Right, there's kind of like, there's kind of two memory models. There's kind of accessors, which does an implicit graph on how data dependencies work. And then there's unified shared memory. And we could use this to, you know, kind of maybe unify the two of those, get rid of the three dimensions. So a SQL accessor um, is just a non-owning view of um, buffer, which owns memory. And it has like, you know, the access mode and, and like host task. And we think, you know, MD span has improvements over that. You know, kind of be able to do rectangular copies. We should be able to do all that, which you can't express in SQL now. And so the current status really is, um, we had to cancel our, um, due to some travel, a lot of travel restrictions from some companies, we had to cancel our meeting last month. So we need to get a face-to-face -face meeting to decide what direction we want to go in with this. Or a long telecon to decide that. And one of the things, do we go to C++23? Because square brackets requires that. And again, I believe, you know, ergonomically, you know, that matters. I mean, the reference, the Cocos implementation has a fallback to function call operator, of course. And then things we're doing in Cocos, right? So we kind of have like, like five related papers being targeted. Right now, we actually, we are re refactoring our Cocos view to internally use MD span. And we got like five papers on the BOS, um, MD array, so MD span padded MD span layouts and atomic refs and atomic accessors. So MD array is kind of the owning version and it's an adapter, right? So the space is actually owned by something underneath. It could be an array, it could be a vector, small vector, whatever you want or need. And the initial proposal had a container policy. Um, people didn't really like that. <laughs> So why, and why an adapter so we can use other stuff, especially on GPUs, like we can't on every platform use um, standard array because the member functions on some platforms have to be marked saying like I can run this on the device. So we'd have to have our own version that says you can run this on the device. It's frustrating, but yeah, it's, it's real world. I mean, the, the standard doesn't know about GPUs, right? The standard doesn't even know about processes, right? Those threads, cores. <laughs> uh, that, that is one possibility, it's, but I, I hope to retire long before that would get through our committee. <laughs> so yeah, so we go, no, you should just like, just pass the container you want. <laughs> you know, um, if it's all static extends, we can default to arrays, otherwise use a vector. And we just said, I think we just said the, like the whole default is just vectors. People like the adapter design. It's consistent, you know, 
uh, our three main things more consistent with um, what MD span ships. And then there's just minor stuff there. And then this version, I'm part of on this version, but um, I have some family issues. So I have to read the paper to make sure that it actually fixes the issues in the move from state. Uh, I propose like simplifying a lot of the constructors. There were a bunch, I, could, I got rid of like two thirds of them or something and more functionality. It's like flat map, you know, there's a lot of constructors and use variable you can like just forward a bunch of things and things work far better. And there were some issues with the deduction guides in earlier papers, I fixed those. And so uh, I'll, since this came up a couple of times um, at this conference, right, you know, what is, what's the problem with move from, right? We want our types to have strong invariants. And so if I'm wrapping something and I have an invariant to preserve, I have to know the move from state. And the standard for, says for most of the types, like it's in a valid but unspecified state, and that's not sufficient for composability. And worse, if it's all static extents, one of the invariants that this has is that space is still always accessible. So if there's a vector underneath and you do move, the move from vector has, is empty, and I can't resize it. I mean, I could try, if I know it's a vector, I could try to resize it, but that could throw. And then what do I do? So like, that's a possibly failing option. <laughs> like array has no problem because like the elements can be removed from state, but that's not, that doesn't break the invariance of MD array. So, and vector clear doesn't make, right? So flat map can get away with things like vector clear to maintain their invariant. Uh, priority queue, when they added move, nobody bothered. <laughs> it, it doesn't say anything and I'm pretty sure none of the implementations actually try, right? Because Priority queue has to be, you know, in its um, heap order. There's no guarantee you move from thing that's adapting is remains in the heap, is either clear or remains in the heap order, right? There's no requirement. I tried to get this fixed for, for a flat map and flat multi-map, I got rejected. But to be clear, like, um, to be, yeah, to be, yeah, I wanted that. To be clear, clear can solve this for flat map. <laughs> Uh, so MD span, I haven't followed um, recently, but I hope this is still correct. And this is just the pulled out parts. And you can have um, an index type. And you have the full range of indices. And kind of like, you know, it's got a, it's also a striped index range. You know, it has an offset where you start, where you want to start inside the extent, which is not the end, just the end of the subrange and the stride. And this has some customization points, um, some of these band mapping function, and it's a these band offset function. So it's, it's working its way through. It's um, right now going through um, LWG wording review, but I don't know that LEWG's finished approving it yet. I don't remember. Uh, another proposal is padded layouts, right? If, if you want um, storage that has some padding, so like, you know, it's continuous for here, but the next thing has to be like, you know, next cache line or, so that's um, working its way through the committee. And the last one I'm going to talk about is atomic refs bound to memory orderings and atomic accessors. Right? You know, we, 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 I made this claim, right, that you could just change the accessor and get, you know, you can add things like atomic ref. And this is more concrete stuff to support that use case. So we're proposing three um, bounded atomic classes. Yes. Got it. So we're proposing three atomic um, class, relaxed, um, acquire release, and sequentially consistent. Uh, acquire release is weird, a little weird because its loads are done by acquire and its stores are done by release, not by the memory order. And so this went through SG1, which is the concurrency parallelism um, group. And they wanted the bounded memory order, th these three. And they want to say you can't change, so in atomic ref, you have to specify the order like as parameters. We could also say you can override um, the memory order with parameters and SG1 said, no, no, we don't want people doing that. They can do something else if they need that functionality. We just don't see a need for it. And there's an open question and this one's my fault. So I, I specified this as um, an exposition only type that you do templates aliases for. And now people are saying, we should expose that and make that a, a fully fledged templated type that people can use. So this is still an open question in LEWG. Hopefully next week in Varna we will resolve it. 
But all this is really so we can get that. Right, you have an atomic accessor. Who, all you do, the only difference between that and default accessor is we've changed the reference from a T ampersand to atomic ref. Atomic accessor relax, is atomic ref relax, uses atomic ref relax. And you plug them in, they just worked. I mean, you know, if, if, if this shows the power of like, you know, we think we got MD span right, mostly right. I think right, but yeah. We didn't like to say, you know, 100% anything. So yeah, we haven't, not only multi dimensional right, it took us eight years, and it was, but it's not designed by committee, it's consensus by committee. Committee votes on like, you know, that people have different, you know, it's not that the people are wrong, it's we all have different viewpoints based on what we work on. And so it's trade-offs, we're trying to figure out what the correct trade-offs are for things. And, you know, we make, and it's also based on many years of practical deployment experience from Kodos. And we got buy-in from a lot of different places. You know, that, that helps, right? You're not, you're not trying to sneak something in. You're not trying to, you know, run over something. You, you're trying to address everyone's concerns as best you can. And this is, I, I believe, one of the flagship libraries in 23. Thanks to, you know, I've gone for employing me and Kodos for employing me. And <laughs> Uh, my general kind of like have to write that everywhere. <laughs> uh, how you get funded, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Yes. If if you can, if you can map it correctly, yes. Because yeah, I mean you can use integers, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. C can you use negative indexes? Yes, you can. Sure, if you're, if you, if assuming you have ints for your, you know, your indexing type, yes. Uh, I hope so. I read uh, some early version of this paper, uh, and I remember that there was no support for things like retroboot. I mean, the compressed one. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, well, you mean MD array? I mean, MD span doesn't. Care. MD span just takes a pointed memory. Yeah. Right. MD array is not going to support compressed vector rule. Vector bool is in is in contiguous space behind it, right? You get pr proxy, you get proxies back. You, you don't know what the space is, right? It's yeah, not so contiguous space, so no, it won't be supported in MD span. <laughs> I mean, do you like vector bool? <laughs> it's it's kind of an albatross in the in the committee, right? And I'll, I'll give my my sidebar. Um, I had to file a bug report against vector bool. <laughs> Um, when I was working on Mac Apple and I, um, we changed, uh, working in training, we changed a bunch of our code from pushbacks to mplacebacks. Turned out no one put mplaceback into vector bool. And I was like, should it be variadic? And Alistair Meredith t told me, that, yeah, here's why, give me a reason. So I have to propose that. And, and ironically, the only place we had it was our test framework. We weren't using vector bool anywhere in production code. No, so, so, yeah, why would you want vector bool? As, 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 it's not specified to even guarantee compression, right? Yeah. It's, Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what the committee would like to see is, is a better replacement so we could deprecate vector bool. And I, I, have, I have a secret plan. <laughs> my, my secret plan is, is small vector, which won't do that, that specialization, and then deprecate everything except vector bool. Because it's too hard to deprecate vector bool in the committee. So that's just my secret plan. My secret April Fool's Day plan, I should <laughs> No, it's, it is a good question. I mean, it's, it's, it's good data for us to have on the committee, actually. Any more questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>